Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. On this episode, we're gonna convert my manual brakes to power. Let's get to it. All right guys, first things first, I'm gonna pull him in. I'm gonna knock all four wheels off, open the bleeders, we're gonna drain the system. And then we're gonna go into what parts did I buy? Well, I can tell you 75 Nova stuff is not readily available from parts stores. And the junkyards up here in the Rust Belt, well, few and far between. So I bought stuff for a 74 Nova because I'm thinking firewalls are pretty much the same. How hard can this be? So I'm going to take you along. We're going to go through this, see if it works. Okay, guys, as you can see, I'm up on four jack stands. The wheels are all off. Now's the time to make sure all the bleeders open. Uh, if they don't, you know, you might be off to the parts store for a caliper or a wheel cylinder. You're going to need all four to open because you got to get that air out once you're done with your conversion. Hey, just a reminder, brake fluid and painted surfaces don't mix, so uh, if you get it on anything, wipe it off immediately. Okay, the system's bled. Uh, next step's going to be I'm going to take this master cylinder and proportioning valve out, and then we're going to see if that booster's going to fit. Okay, if I understand this correctly, we're down here at the brake pedal inside the car. Uh, this little guy here, this is for your brake lamp switch. Then there's an empty hole above that. See that? I believe that is for power brakes. And then above it, you'll see where there's a pin already installed that's going to my master cylinder, the push rod. That is for manual brakes. Uh, some of you guys may have this pedal where it has both positions. You may not. That's something you have to take into account. All right, difficult to see. Here's the pin. Goes through my pedal. Pedal. Pin. Behind this is the rod to the master. Uh, also attached to this there's a spring and that attaches in a little hole up here under the dash that allows your pedal to return. So I'm going to pull this pin and then this will be all, you know, detached. One other thing, when you disconnect that brake pedal and it's just swinging loose, that's going to cause your brake lights to stay on. So disconnect your battery. Now the car sat here overnight and I just let it drain and I put a couple paper towels in the master here just to sop up what was left. Uh, the next thing's gonna be, since I already disconnected the brake pedal, is disconnect these lines and uh, a couple bolts on either side. This master will get it out of here. Easy peasy. Next thing is, um, I'm going to get this bracket out of here with this old proportioning valve. I'm not going to be using this anymore. Um, I disconnect this line here. That goes to my left front. This one here goes to my right front. And the one in the back here, that goes to the rear wheels. So we'll disconnect those lines and then just take a couple of these nuts off here, get this out of the way. All right, 
right, before I get started installing this stuff, just want to go over what I bought. This kit came from Jegs. Uh, let's see, go to their website here, part number 555-631430. It lists for $195.99, and then uh, they offer $20 coupon, knocks it down to $175.99. Not a bad deal, if you ask me. They give you everything to convert from manual to power. Uh, the only exception, you know, wild card in this whole situation is brake lines on your car. Do you need to lengthen them? Do you need to shorten them? Uh, the other one would be brake pedal, you know, the mounting location of the rod on the back of the booster. So that being said, booster, 11 inch, gold anodized, looks good. It's gonna look good underneath the, uh, the hood there. They got a threaded push rod. They give you a clevis. This just screws on the back here. And this is what attaches to your brake pedal. Now to attach this to your brake pedal, they give you a pin, goes through, and then a cotter pin. Pretty sweet deal. Master itself, it's a one inch bore. Very nice unit. Uh, there's a slug they give you. It fits in the back there. This push rod goes in between the booster and the master and a couple block off slugs. Um, I'll be using these on my right side of the master. The left side is gonna be connected to the proportioning valve. And let's go to the proportioning valve here. Nice unit, very heavy, solid, nice. Uh, they give you a bracket and the hardware to connect these two together. Here's the brake lines that will hook valve to master. They also give you a pigtail here for the brake warning switch on top. If your existing harness doesn't fit on this, I think most of them will. Um, but if it doesn't, they give you a pigtail, just one wire, cut and splice, plug it on there, good to go. Uh, they also give you a bleeder kit for your master. I'm not sure I'll be using that, but it's nice to have. And... We got a couple generic instructions, ones for the booster, ones for the valve. So overall looking at it, nice kit, looks like it'll work. We shall see, let's get to it. All right, serious test of your patience is the four nuts to bolt that thing to the firewall. Yeah, Brrr. not easy to do. Anyways, make sure those nuts are tight. That booster is solid up against the firewall. You don't want any flex when you hit the brake pedal. That can't move. It's got to be rock solid. So yeah, get those four nuts tight. And by the way, I didn't have to drill or round anything out. It mounted right to it. No problem. Inside the car, it looks good. The rods come through the firewall. There's a little plastic uh, cup type gasket thing on this side, the engine side, that seals that. So looks good. Okay, uh, just looking at this thing. I'll show you here in a second. I'll take this little plastic cap off and grab a set of pliers. Pull this push rod out. All right, you saw me take that plastic cap off and I pulled out this push rod that was in the booster. Now in the kit, they give you a longer one. I can only assume that's for one of the other applications, uh, you know, different vehicles. But on the back of this master, that slug goes in there. We're gonna use the short rod in the booster. We'll press against there. Now. Just for your own knowledge, the slug plus that pin, and then this long pin, the same length. 
but I'm going to use the slug and not this guy because this would just be wobbling around in here. You don't want that. So, short rod and slug. All right, short rod goes in. Our master. Set him on here like so. Start the, uh, I'm going to start this nut over here. And tight. I'm going to grab my bracket for my proportioning valve. It's going to go over there. And we'll start this nut. Yeah, that should work nice. All right, can everybody see what I'm doing? We're going to go ahead and uh, attach this proportioning valve to this bracket. Give you a washer to put in between the bracket and the prop valve. And this bolt here with a lock washer. This goes towards the rear of the car. This is for the rear brakes. I'll tell you what, maybe I should loosen that nut there, give a little bit more slop so I can get this line connected. Yeah, that's going to do it for us. All right. Come on. Let's get the other line. Start up here. So I'm just going to snug these up. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to lock them down until we're ready to start bleeding. I just, I got to run some lines and stuff. But anyways, never force these guys. Don't, you don't want to force it. You don't want to risk cross threading and then you're going to have leaks. Um, uh, couple ways I've found is as I'm you know starting it I'll wiggle as I'm turning it by hand um, another way to do it is line it up as close as you can spin it backwards you're spinning it backwards you'll hear a click stop and then start spinning it you know righty tighty that'll usually uh, that'll usually get you but again you don't want to be cross threading damaging stuff just makes for a long day uh, one other note on this I did install the uh, the pl plugs on the other side of the master here torque those down nice and tight so they don't leak okay guys let's talk about brake pedals real quick I took Frank's out so we can see what we're dealing with here this is a 75 to 79 brake pedal now are they all the same I don't know I don't know um, you may or may not have the second pin location right if you don't and you need to drill a hole here, my measurement that I got, inch and five sixteenths from the center of this pin to the center of that hole. Um, if you want to retain this pin style, put it down here. You'd grind this because it's like a rivet. Punch it out. Put it in your new hole. Weld it. Uh, for me, I'm using the later 74 to 68 style with a clevis. So that hole works out good for me. I can put this here. And put the pin through it and uh, that's it um, why do they have two hole locations well I'm gonna give you my best explanation theory don't believe everything you see on the internet but this is my interpretation with the manual brakes the master is flat up against the firewall and it keeps the rod as straight as possible into this upper hole that's key rod needs to be straight 
if it's in this lower hole going in at an angle, is it going to work? Probably. Is it right? No. So uh, keeping the rod straight as possible into the upper hole, uh, you're applying force. You know, at the top of that arc, it's going to make the uh, manual brakes easier to use. So going to power. Now, with the boosters, uh, 79 going all the way back to uh, 68 at least, they have an angled bracket on the back of the booster. You might have saw that on this one. What it does is it throws the booster at an angle, so it's no longer flat up against the firewall. It is at an angle. So remember, we want to keep that rod as straight as possible, so they had to come up with a lower hole. Um, you know, with the power assist, doesn't take as much force to stop the car to press this brake pedal. So they could come down a little lower on the arc there, press the pedal. And yeah, that's my theory. So I think that's right. You decide. Uh, I'm gonna throw this pedal back in. And we're gonna move on. All right, guys, underneath the dash here, pedals installed, the clevis screwed onto the rod and in or out will give you adjustment as to where where it lands on the pedal so you can put your pin through but i got it all set up pedal works great springs right back also making sure my brake lamp switch is going to open and close so my brake lights work but not too bad so uh let's get this guy plumbed and uh put some fluid in him okay jumping ahead i went ahead and plumbed up the car here um i had to lengthen my lines I didn't replumb the entire car. I just added some connections and uh, took care of this real quick. Right front, left front, and then in the back. A little difficult to see. It's a line coming off the back of the proportioning valve goes down there to a junction. So with that being said, let's just talk about brake line real quick and we'll move on. All right, talking about brake lines real quick. Maybe you want to replumb your whole car. You're in this deep. Let's just do it. Or maybe you're like me, I just need to extend my brake line, so you're gonna have to get into this. Uh, it can be a little intimidating. It's not bad though. If you're a little mechanically inclined, have some patience, no problem. Uh, first off, you're gonna need a tubing cutter. Uh, this style's a ratcheting one. Uh, they have the just regular small tiny ones are cheap. You can get them anywhere, any good hardware store, auto parts store. Um, tubing benders. So many different styles. Yes, they work great. Do you need them? Well, if you're working with steel line, yeah, I would use them. The steel line, this stuff's not very forgiving. It's hard to bend. Uh, if you if you over bend it, there you go. That happens. Now, nickel copper line. This stuff, I tell you what, it's great. It's the way to go. It's so forgiving. I mean, this stuff is just, it's very difficult to kink it. You can run it wherever you want. You can turn this into a pretzel if you want. Um, flaring tools, flaring tools. Okay, they got the old school, you know, the crank ones. You're killing your hands. They worked great for years and they still do, but there's a better option out there. What I have here is a universal hydraulic flaring tool kit. I'm a mechanic by trade, so I spent the money on this. You can get these from parts stores. They'll rent them out to you. They work great. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and I'll just flare a little piece of line here and show you how nice they are. Okay, so universal hydraulic flaring tool set by Master Cool. Yeah, awesome, awesome tool. What's not awesome is the price. It's like, I know this cost me 400 bucks about five, six years ago. I'm sure it's more now, but this is capable of doing fuel line, brake line, tranny cooler lines. You got a bunch of line holders, a bunch of inserts. Um, yeah, so we got this tool here. It's just a hydraulic press. It's really nice. I went ahead and grabbed a really big piece of line here. Now this isn't gonna be brake line. This is 5 16 it's huge, but for purposes of demonstration, here we'll use this so you got a nice cut edge on here it's nice and square 
free of any burrs or anything. Now, you're gonna take your fitting, first thing. Don't forget to put your fitting on the line. And this tool can be carried around the car. You can run your lines and then flare on the car. That's what's really great about it. Um, so you got your fitting on. I'm gonna grab my 5 16 blocks here. I'm gonna set them in the tool. I'm gonna take my line. I'm gonna insert it through here. I'm gonna bring it right down to the edge of the block. I'm gonna tighten this up. Show you what that looks like. See the, the line's coming down, but it's not coming past the edge of this block right here. So that's where you stop. Make sure that's tight. Now I'm gonna take my first insert, looks like that. It goes in here. And you screw it up into the line. Just keep screwing this handle here. I'm gonna run this in until it stops. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and close the hydraulic mechanism. Now we're just gonna go ahead and pump. That presses up into there. You keep going until it stops. Don't have to overdo it. Okay, it stopped. We're gonna release the pressure. Unscrew this guy. There we go. There you go, there's the first stage of your double flare. Go ahead and put that away. We're gonna pull out this one that looks like a cone. Now this works for all the different sizes, the cone piece. Insert him in. Again, we're gonna screw this up into the line. Keep going here until it stops, snug it up. Close the hydraulics. We're gonna go ahead and pump this guy up until it stops. Again, don't overdo it. Release the pressure. There we go. Get that out of there. Now we just take this, loosen that up, pull this out. Boom. There's your double flare. Looks great, right? You can't mess this up. Take your time. You're going to have great flares every time. Now this thing, like I said, you can, uh, you can rent or lease this from... Um, Part stores, good part stores will have this in stock. And um, like I said, you can take this around the car to each corner, you know, anywhere you want to make a flare. Just don't forget to put your fitting on the line first. All right, hooked up my electrical connector. I used the one that came with the kit. It just fit nicer, it's better connection than uh, what was on my wiring harness. So one wire, cut and splice, real easy. And don't forget the guy that makes it all happen. Get yourself a piece of fuel rated hose here. Booster over here, top of the intake for me. This was just convenient. There was already a port here, hooked it to it. Um, all carburetors are gonna have this little plug on the back here. What you do is you unscrew that and then you can put a fitting that looks like so right in the back there and hook your hose to that. All right, you can see you got a towel here that's gonna get any fluid that's gonna come out of here possibly or spill. We don't want it on painted parts. Again, be careful. I went ahead and used their supplied kit to bleed the master. You can do this on the bench. I decided to do it in the car. It's a little easier for me. Uh, so the tubes go up, go into the very base of each bowl and you top this off careful not too much and you're going to work that brake pedal till you get all the air bubbles out of the system you'll see them passing through these tubes once i'm satisfied with that we'll go ahead reconnect the proportioning valve to the master carefully and top off we'll gravity bleed and then we'll move on to uh, manual bleeding In the home stretch here, guys, long video. I know, don't worry, it's almost done. Uh, went ahead, bled that master, 
pulled the bleeder kit off, hooked all my lines back up for the final time, cranked them all down. Uh, don't over torque them, soft metal, you can mess stuff up, be careful. Anyways, topped off the master, gonna go ahead and let this gravity bleed. I've got all four bleeders open. I'm just gonna let fluid get into the lines, into some drain pans at all four corners here. And then we'll go ahead and seal it all up and pressure bleed. I'm gonna need an assistant for that so when the wife gets home from grocery shopping, isn't she a lucky gal, uh, get her to help me do this and we'll be on the road. All right, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay guys, one last thing I suggest you do after you bleed your brakes, just have somebody stand on the pedal and then go around and check all your new fittings for leaks. You'll see a little bit of wetness if they're not tight enough. If you see some wetness, torque it down a little bit. If you still have wetness, it might be the flare that has uh, just not seated right. So you might wanna unscrew it and recheck it. So go ahead and stand on the brakes. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I think I'm good. Okay. Brakes feel great. No leaks. Ready for that test drive. Okay, yeah, they work great. Um, stops right now, not 50, 100 feet from now, right now. Uh, it's gonna make it so much nicer to drive. Great upgrade, guys. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for hanging in there. This was a long one. I know, uh, I was just trying to be as thorough as I possibly could. That way, maybe somebody could use this as a reference as far as the upgrade from manual to power brakes. It worked great. It's pretty straightforward. Um, tried to include as much technical data as I could as far as what to look for. Uh, anyways, if you're looking to buy one of these fourth gens, uh, not only the Nova, but the Buick, the Olds, the Pontiac, there's plenty of them out there and parts are available. Um, there's some manufacturers out there making new parts. Um, Facebook groups, they'll help you with technical data. Also parts for sale and cars for sale as well. Uh, these groups go from different geographical locations in the U.S. Uh, and Mexico, Canada, you know, like the Midwest group, New England group. There's a group dedicated just to the 91C police cars. Uh, Steve Engels, shout out, cool group. Uh, Jeff Lackey, he heads up one of the main Nova groups. He's doing some real innovative stuff with LED uh, taillights, side markers, turn signals, crazy stuff. But these guys love their cars, and they're not going to give up on them anytime soon. So pick you up one before uh, they're hard to find. But with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.